this is Ross Van Berkeley from Jenkins Design Build, and I am really excited about someone that we have here today. And this is Monica Fabio, and, and Monica is an extraordinary person. You can just see by her smile and how excited she is about when she meets uh, new people and engages with you. But just to give you a little update about Monica, Monica has been in the real estate business since 2002. Uh, she is an expert in the Austin area. She has lived here for over 24 years. Uh, she has created a successful business called the Fab Property Group, where she is dedicated to providing unparalleled service for all of her clients, both buyers and sellers, and giving them a fabulous experience. And I'm going to talk, I'm going to ask her about what a fabulous experience is. So I'm excited to know what that is. She's won numerous awards, many, many awards from her team, but she's also been a recent recipient of the Luxury League. And it's just a great honor to be a part of that. And so we'll ask a little bit about that. But she's also been uh, starring on American Dream TV. And if you haven't seen it, it's really inspiring to see lifestyles of the people in Central Texas, as well as their real estate and prom promoting their opportunities to show uh, what incredible, incredible properties they're out there. So it's really exciting that she has shared some of her time there. And also what's also important too in these times is serving others. And Monica has done an excellent job promoting and incorporating her team in the Compass Cares program, but also her uh, you know, ser service work with the United Way. So we're gonna talk a little bit about service. So. Monica, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. So before we get started, I need to ask, how are you? How are your family? How's the rest of the team at Fab uh, Property Group? Is everybody okay and healthy? We are all healthy. We all keep saying, I think we already had it, but uh, none of us have fallen terribly ill, um, maybe just a little tired some days, uh, but thankfully everyone's healthy and we've, um, I've actually been quarantining but with my team we figured we were already family and so we've uh, just been hunkering down mostly at, at my new home um, and so it's worked out well good 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 all right so let's start I want to hear about your story I want to hear about you how you got started where you started off tell us a little bit about your shared experience and, and where you are today well, I grew up, my dad um, was an architect and he's actually 86 now and is still working with ADA inspections and so forth, but he used to do a lot of commercial and residential architecture and our home was always under construction. <laughs> so I kind of grew up around models and floor plans and, and sawdust, um, but I, I was in fine arts my entire life. I played classical piano, danced three, four hours a day, um, tried to sing, that wasn't my forte, acting, uh, went to college for that, ended up in LA, um, traveled the world with the company and got to know about a lot of different cultures and kind of got the travel bug and really loved architecture and art. You know, I've always been a very, very artsy person, but also um, some guy tested me and said, it's a ring of fire, so I have brain. I'm, I'm not saying it's always a good thing, you wear yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you need this, you need this uh, nutrient or this supplement so that your yeah. snaps can go like this. Um, but the good thing is I'm very much a creative and a numbers person. And I think that serves me well in real yeah. estate. I went out to LA and um, just didn't, I, I just felt like I was, had no control of my future. It's like, okay, you're too tall. You're too short. You're too skinny. You're too fat. Your eyes are blue. You're in I looked at a lot of people with great success in it and, and some, you know, I just, I wasn't, I guess, made for that uncertainty. And I am a very strategic kind of person who wants to work hard and see results from it. Right. <laughs> so right. I, I missed my, my roots here in Texas. I had always lived in Texas except for this two and a half, three year stint in, in LA. I uh, came back and I got quickly into high tech and rose uh, and the ranks and became a regional VP of sales for a telecommunications voice data equipment company. But with that, because I was a regional VP of sales, I was traveling like crazy. I you know, got married, had my, my beautiful baby boy. who's a, a big old boy now, big old man. <laughs> um, but we uh, just hit the road. I had a Southwest airlines friends fly free card for my right. nanny <laughs> and he was under two. So he was free. And so literally I would say up, oh, pack up we're leaving tomorrow I'm taking we're going to Portland I'm running through the airport with you know like a pump <laughs> and going <laughs> running to Portland dropping them off uh, taking an overnight to Alaska and I mean, we did this 38 times the first 11 months of his life 
and oh that gosh. got to be really tiring. And 9-11 uh, happened. We were getting on a flight to go to LA, I believe. And of course, didn't board that flight. And just between that, and it got harder and harder to travel, and the economics were going to change when they turned to, and, um, and oh, and then the company, the last company I was at, um, they went through about 150 million and didn't have their, their God box exactly how it needed to be. And so they offered me a severance. I took it, um, decided, okay, well, what, what am I going to do now? I just don't want to travel <laughs> right, right now. Right. And I thought, well, I'll piddle in real estate, um, took my exams and it's not like me to just piddle. So I pretty much <clears throat> within six months time frame had my first assistant and was off and running and have not you know, really stopped since, except for one little hiatus, which was great because I got to spend some time with my son. But yeah, well, that's awesome. That's well. So when you engage with clients, you know, both the buyers and the sellers. I mean, you have such a great team that you put together. Is that kind of how you start the discussions? How do you kind of start the discussions when you're trying to meet new clients and what you're trying to help them out with? Uh, most of my um, so so most of my business is by referral. It's okay. obviously not all. A lot of repeat repeat clients um so to me it's just all about connecting with people how like I, I when i first started i knew a lot of people i grew up pretty much in well definitely right. in texas and spent most of my life in austin um so i just literally started adding i had a goal of you know five people a day just meet it it could be someone at the grocery store it could be vendors you work I mean just anybody and everybody and just started marketing to them and trying to help them provide good information you know it's always a give ask receive kind of thing I think I always tell right. my team we always want to give and um, sometimes it's uncomfortable to ask but my favorite things are to do the client appreciation parties because it makes me feel like I'm not bothering someone even though you know I feel like I'm trying to help everybody all the time but that gives me a great reason to to call and, and connect with them and um, and then hopefully they'll remember me when and my team when they're ready to buy or sell or know anybody right. more importantly know anybody because sure. even if they're not we all know about seven people a year who are buying or selling so i don't know if that answered your question it that's was exactly it, well <laughs> because what, what that means is you're you're giving and i love that you give ask receive that giving is what we're doing today because you're going to give some of your insights about what's going on today, how it's affecting the market, you know, to be that resource to people. And that giving is something that's so important right now as we're trying to just tell people, hey, we just want to be a resource. We just want to be here a light with everything that's going on. But speaking of that light, I, I got to ask you, you know, we talk about, you know, a fabulous experience and being here at Jenkins Design Build. We really want to kind of create that uncompromised, fabulous experience here when it comes to design and build. Tell me what is a fabulous experience or talk about an example of maybe somebody that you worked with that had a fabulous experience. So overall, when I meet someone, whether it's over the phone or an email, I immediately want to find a way to connect with them. And from beginning to end and hopefully way past the transaction, establish a friendship of of trust and camaraderie. I've always wanted it to feel like we're a team because we are, we're not the enemy. I mean, you right. don't always have good news. Sometimes it's things people have to hear and not what they want to hear. But if you establish that from the beginning and really just hold people's hand through the process, just, just little things. When people come to town, I'm going to give them a list of our, you know, fab favorite restaurants and try to help them there with you. hotel. Do you need a ride from the airport? And just uh, from the beginning to end, drive them around. I try to, time allowing have dinner if they want. I mean, they may right. say, no, we're on a date. <laughs> <laughs> Leave us alone. Um, but just even after the sale, trying to, um, you know, it's, it's hard. Our life is so, so fast and it's hard to stay connected to people. But um, that's one thing I think from all this quarantine, um, right. that's been a great thing, but backing back up fab experience. Um, yeah, I want to continue to give them good information. I want to make them feel like part of the fab group of friends through client appreciation parties and and um, just keep holding their hand along life's way. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, speaking of holding their hand and, and giving and such, talk about what's going on today. I mean, what, do you, what are your thoughts about what's going on today? You know, do you feel like, you know, what you're facing new what kind of information do you want to share with, with new clients or even existing clients that have worked with you? What are the challenges that you're facing right now as we're going through this, this kind of season of uncertainty? 
I think time management has always been the hardest thing to do. And life is so fast, big data, you know, big numbers. You've got all these millennials out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and really to keep up in this business and with the numbers and, um, you, you have to, to communicate in a massive way, but the challenge is when there's only so much time, how are you going to make it more personal? Right. Um, I think, you know, social media, I think is a wonderful thing, but it's also, we think that things are so much easier now because we're not having to run to a fax or go get a key at an office or look through a phone book for listings. But what we have now is a huge, immense amount of social media. Um, it's just, you just can get lost in it. You know, we're part of, I don't even know, eight to 15 real estate Facebook groups. So we want to make right. sure we put our listings and all of those. We've got LinkedIn, you've got Twitter, you've got Facebook personal, you've got Facebook business, you've got Instagram, you've got right. all the video <laughs> and it's, um, it's a lot to keep up with. So I think, um, a lot of us would, could hide easily behind email. I know I've been guilty of that. And, and I mean, hopefully you're even doing that. Right. Um, to, but it starts to feel robotic and not connected. And so I think a really cool thing, like us right now with this Zoom meeting, you know, I did a Zoom meeting with my two half sisters on Easter. And the first little Zoom happy hour I had with some friends, I thought, okay, this is silly. I don't, this is just really silly. Whatever. Okay. I'm going to go on to this happy hour. But it was kind of cool to see people's faces. And even though you're not getting to hug each other and it's uh, it was way more connecting than an email or a text. So yeah. I think that, um, you know, I've, I've bought this software for years called bomb bomb and I've wasted so much money because I haven't utilized it um, to the best of my ability. Right. Um, so this has been a nice, I think that it's just so important in video we've all known forever. It's so important for yeah. our listings and to show our buyers, not just homes, but our, our city. And that's partly what I do on the American dream show. But um, yeah, that's one thing I think I've learned is that uh, not just video, but using it to connect with people and not being shy about it. I mean, sometimes I worry because of time management. I don't want to distract people. I don't want to bug them. But I really can't think of one time when I was um, calling to just see how they are, ask about their family, ask about their dreams, about their work, that they've said, don't call me. <laughs> um, <laughs> And that's really what it's all about. And I mean, hopefully I can talk a little bit about real estate and they'll remember me yeah. when that time comes. But well, and the thing is, with it's we're all being bombarded. I mean, I'm, I'm binge watching different shows now. I don't, I don't even want to share <laughs> with you what, which ones I'm, I'm binge watching. But I mean, we're wanting content and we've got the time. We're, we're sitting in, you know, shelter in place. We're, we're trying to be with our loved ones and, and really connect with everyone. But there's still that need for content and I was just noticing just a couple of hours ago, you posted about, you know, uh, landscaping and how to be eco-friendly. And I was like, I, I would have never probably opened it up, you know, during the time that I was, but then I thought to myself, I said, that's great information. Let me click on this and know about this. And so how do you create all this content? I, I consider you a content leader because of all the different platforms that you're on to get this information out. How do you are able to capture all that and get that out to everybody? Thankfully, I am a, a learner. I mean, I would say if anything um, identif uh, describes me is that I like to know a little bit, a lot about everything that I could possibly know about. There's very little that bores me. I mean, I don't really like taxes. <laughs> I don't love insurance. <laughs> <other than that. laughs> um, and so I'm just, I am a hungry, I've always been an avid reader of, um, I, unfortunately, I've gotten away from fiction, although I'd one day like to sit on the beach with a book. I'll do that again. But um, I just, from print to online on our phones and then my team, I even have my son, uh, McCade, doing some social media and kind of a different perspective. And then Taylor, my right-hand guy, he's amazing director of operations and our, we just think alike and uh, just between all of us and then a buyer specialist, Rebecca, we all kind of 
help create it. Um, I do subscribe to a couple of very, very good real estate news type um, organizations that give me some content. But the thing is, you don't want to post the same content on your right. Facebook, your Instagram. I mean, sometimes that happens. And certainly we want our listings to be everywhere. But um, yeah, it's, it's quite a, quite a job to do, but there is so much content. Um, and then if you can create content, such as uh, what I do on the show, we can take long snippets and cut them down and repurpose it. And so. That's great. Well, that's, that's what we're all wanting. I mean, we want to know that we've got an agent that it knows what's going on in the market, knows how to handle situations. And that's you know, a testament to you and your group on how you're, you're creating that. So that, that's wonderful. With, with everything that we're going on, you talked about the virtual, you know, and using the different, uh, you know, platforms like Bomb Bomb and everything. Do you think uh, we're going to go back to normal? I mean, I know we're not in the prediction game, but I mean, what do you think might change now from this that now buyers or sellers are going to maybe rely more upon and what do you think maybe is going to be a change in what we do uh, in business and real estate so I, I do think that being in the same room with people and i do think riding in the car and and showing them things along the way is important and i don't think that will go away i, I just can't imagine we've been doing it for however many hundreds of years in right. person however um I think there's a lot of value in what I've learned. You know, it takes about six weeks to make a habit. So I get up now and I think, okay, how many Zoom calls do we have today? <laughs> and a lot of it has been working on the business and um, networking with other agents, learning what's going on in your market, what's going on in our market, what does this economist say, how do I guide my clients? And rather than you know dealing with Austin traffic and having to get in a car, go to a meeting, I, I really think it's a, been a nice fast forward for the world that uh, there are more efficient ways to do things that can, uh, you know, not to say that we shouldn't have team meetings all in the same room ever again, in my opinion, but um, it's just even with your team or I, I just find it efficient and nice to see a face and to talk. You can hear inflections, you can hear right. emotions. And um, so I plan on using Zoom and these tools more and maybe that will give me the extra time when I'm not stuck in traffic driving an hour each way or whatever to maybe like I've had to do the last six weeks use my oven rather you know for something other than hiding presents <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> I used to cook a ton and it just kind of you know escaped me I mean I stopped working out for two years unfortunately because I just was so busy and a lot of transitions in my personal life but I just ordered one of those mirrors <laughs> Oh those yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't hung it yet, but um, you know, that's just kind of interesting. It might, it's just like a, maybe a new way of life for me. I might yeah. get to work out. There you go. Well, I, I, I just got a Peloton uh, my wife really was the one that was this, the one that kind of inspired, but now my son, you know, just a freshman in high school is like, dad, aren't you going to buy me some shoes? And now he's on the Peloton. So it's just, you know, yeah. creating those moments to try to be closer to family, but also to realize that, you know, there's just so much out there that you want to, try to do you, you got to make sure and I love that you know that habit making just make sure that that's something you want to create to keep going at that so uh, that's awesome um, I have to ask and, and this is you know the charities that you do and, and, and you give back and with United Way in this time what are your thoughts about you know uh, giving back you know some examples that you guys have as a group have done what are some things in your thoughts about that to me the definition of true success is when you're able to give back and and really any one of us no matter how much or how little money we have or even time i think if you find the time to give back it's so rewarding and this just sounds so silly because we're not all out there volunteering right now a lot of things that i've done with my son are canceled but i just have been de not not just decluttering but you know moving it's been a six to eight week move in fact my tenants at my old house move in tomorrow so after this call i will be final going through stuff i mean i've given tons of clothes out and um and you know taking things to goodwill and i, I gave a bunch away to some housekeepers and it just felt so good just just that <laughs> So, um, yeah, I've done right now. It's a little bit of a lull, not just because of the coronavirus, but my son graduated. And so a lot of the volunteer work I did in the last year was, um, through young men's service league. So we got to go plant gardens. We got to go, um, Lake Travis crisis ministries. We got to go do a huge clean of, uh, you know, somebody who's really needing help, like their home, their yard. 
it was just so awesome. We'd get up in the morning. I could tell my son's like, you know, tired, but then he would get there and just do amazing. And I, I could tell he felt great about it. Um, one of the, so any baby can, which is a, a United way. Um, it's, that's the charity that I've probably done the most for. It's been a little while, but I just picked up the phone in my early real estate days and said, Hey, you know, I want to get involved in something. I want to do this party. Well, it turned into their second largest fundraiser for five years in a row. I mean, music, I had dancers, music, tons of restaurants. Um, it was a you know big event and it got, it was super, super crazy, busy all the time. So right now, um, with the compass cares that we have a lot of different opportunities to do things, but I like really being more of a starter of something bigger. So I was just on a phone with, uh, some other compass agents in the nation and we haven't quite identified what it's going to be, but we want to use the power of numbers across the nation to say, Hey, this is our cause. Um, I know one of them, she goes and builds houses in Nicaragua. We can't travel there right now. It would be really inexpensive if we could, right. <laughs> but I just don't think that's smart right now. Um, but yeah, I think we're all just like-minded agents who are going to try to come up with something to make it bigger because we can all share that. I know one thing I personally would love to do here in Austin and maybe, maybe it would be nationwide or maybe not, but, um, I saw it in San Antonio and I'm a big, huge dog lover. So, uh, like a doggy fashion show, but just make it this big, cool event. I can use my fine arts background and, and, um, and you know, put it towards the local animal shelters. That's just an example, but I, I like more, I mean, it's super important for people to just volunteer. You don't have to create something, but that's probably a little more me. And that's probably why I'm more of a team leader type. Cause I like to think of something and, and make it happen. And then uh, I need some people to do some of the detail work to <laughs> kind of clean up after me. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I mean, that's, that's the one thing that, you know, I've, been with you and, and talk to you and you inspire people when you're around them I mean you, you you just light up when you're on TV when you're in the room you you really garner uh, the thought of what everyone's thinking but what is Monica thinking and so it's really inspiring and so that's why to take that talent that you have to share that with others and to inspire other people to say hey I want to do this too so that's great that you do that with charities and, and especially with work and leading a, a great team of people like that. So oh, well, I have to ask you, as we're getting you know, to the mm -hmm. end of this, I want to talk to you about the Luxury League. Congratulations. What a great honor. Uh, we're very honored to be a sponsor of this. But with regards to luxury, and I know you've sold a lot of luxury homes and met with a lot of great people, but there's got to be one or two things that you've seen in a home that you're like, wow, I've never seen that before. What is What luxury item, what thing have you seen that you're like, that's pretty incredible. I, maybe not that you want it, but you've seen it and said, wow. Well, first of all, thank you for being a sponsor. Y'all are incredible builders and known y'all a long time and just always are right on the cutting edge and just very, very professional. So thank you very much. You belong in that luxury league um, area as well. Thank you. So, <clears throat> oh gosh. Um, well, I'm, I like clothes and closets a lot. <laughs> um, I have a listing coming up. Um, well, it's a, it's a coming soon, but we're, I, uh, I think next week it'll be in the MLS and, um, they added this entire whole wing to be her closet. Um, and she just did a three minute video of, of it because that's about how long it takes. And that was pretty incredible. <laughs> it makes me go back to my closet, even at my new house. I'm like, gosh, I want mine to look like that, but I'm gonna have to add a wing. Um, so that's one thing. I mean, there's just some, like there's one of the listings I had in Westlake. They just had a really nice um, kitchen bar area with like a, the wine dispensers with the chilled wine cabinet. I've seen some very beautiful wine rooms with the special locked areas for wine. But I have another listing that's coming up um, that has well, we're going to prove it, but the word is that some doors in there were Michael Jackson's some big wood doors. Whoa, yeah. And I just think things like that, like the history more so than the snazzy things I mentioned before or what are very, very cool. Um, 
so just anything that has an old history, like floors that were taken from X, Y, Z or uh, that kind of thing. I've, I've seen quite a bit of that or just special materials that you've just never seen. The same listing with the big, big closet has this uh, beautiful agate stone backsplash and bar. And I think it came from India. I'm still working on this feature sheet, but they're just, I mean, the detail that goes into some of these homes is it's very fun to see. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Monica, your attention to detail, your content, your team, everything that you do is, is inspiring. So thank you so much for spending some time with me and talking and sharing your story. And I'm really excited to, uh, you know, share this with everyone. And, and uh, I hope you get uh, through this as well as everyone's trying to work through this. But I appreciate so much of your time today, Monica. Oh, thank you. And I hope all of y'all are safe and sound. I guess you are because you're there with the beautiful trees in the background. But yeah. we'll uh, see you soon when we can all say hi again in person. Thank you, Monica. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. <laughs>